So let's start with the president's speech uh, in Poland this morning, uh, which took on a bit of an apocalyptic tone from where I sit, where he says uh, the most important issue uh, facing the West today is its will to survive. Uh, do you see it that way? And what did you make of the speech overall as a walk up to his meeting tomorrow with Mr. Putin? Well, uh, in, in many instances, the speech was a tale of two speeches. The president said some things that many Europeans were hoping to hear about the U.S. commitment to NATO, U.S. commitment to a strong defense, U.S. commitment to our mutual security. That was all good. But as you noted, the president also uh, cast a pretty dark tone in much of the speech along the lines of the American carnage uh, part of his inaugural address, talking about the civilizational struggle that we're in. I thought just as revealing, or perhaps more revealing than the speech itself, was what the president said before the speech in his press conference, where he was pretty defensive about the question of Russian meddling in the U.S. election, took some shots at the U.S. press, including NBC. And that put him in a defensive posture, which setting him up for Putin, I think that's something that Putin might tr take advantage of tomorrow. So let's talk about two, two specific items there. One is, did he make explicit uh, which he did not do back when uh, he met uh, with European leaders in May, or NATO leaders in May, I should say, uh, that the United States would view an attack on any of the NATO allies as an attack on all and would respond. That's question one. Did he do that? He did. He referenced what's called Article 5 of the NATO Charter, which is uh, that uh, the, the mutual defense clause of our commitment to NATO. So, yes, and on he Russia, he, he went in a couple of directions there. One, as you pointed out, he was a little equivocal on whether Russia and Russia alone was responsible for electoral meddling. I'd like you to talk a little bit about that and, and what you think that tees up tomorrow. But he also was explicit, was he not, in saying that Russian uh, um, interference and mischief in other parts of the world uh, including the Ukraine, presumably, uh, and also its support of rogue regimes in Syria and Iran needed to be addressed. Absolutely. But again, it, the, the tough language on Russia was what he read in a speech that was clearly written for him. It was important that he said what he said. And as I noted, many Europeans were hoping to hear those words. And if he had not said that, it would have been big news. As, as so that was that was good. But, but on the other hand, when he was asked in a press conference and was speaking off the top of his head, he suggested a little more hesitation on, on pointing the finger at Russia when it came to meddling in our election. But let's go back in time for a little bit and then look to today. Considering what many thought a President Trump would do when it comes to Russia versus where we are today, the administration's actually been far tougher on them than most people expected, hasn't it? Well, again, it depends on what you're looking at. When you look at our defense posture, for example, there's no question General Mattis has, uh, Secretary Mattis now, should, has articulated a policy that's really continuity with the previous administration when it right. comes to U.S. defense There were commitment. predictions the sanctions would be gone, right? Uh, not so soon. I mean, people were unsure, and that's why we're looking very closely at this meeting tomorrow. We know that President Putin will have offer certain things to President Trump, whether it's cooperation in Syria and ISIS or perhaps a discussion about Ukraine. The question is, what price is he going to ask in return? President Trump has talked about having a good relationship with Russia and how that's something we should desire. Well, that's a sensible enough. And it's actually easy to have a good relationship with Russia. You just do everything that Putin wants you to do. So the question is, what is Putin going to offer? What's he going to ask for in return? And what does President Trump find tempting enough to consider. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.